members of the Good morning, distinguished members of the press and colleagues. Today, we present the fifth report of the Independent International Fact-Finding Mission on the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, which covers the period from 1st of September 2023 to 31st of August 2024. During this period, we have observed a worsening of the human rights situation, especially following the presidential elections of 28th of July. The period covered by our report was marked by acts of repression in the period leading up to the presidential elections of 28th of July, the massive protests that took place after the National Electoral Council announced President Maduro's victory, and the violent response by security forces and armed civilian groups aligned with the government all orchestrated by the highest civilian and military levels of the government, including President Maduro. Our findings are overwhelming. Not only have there been no improvements, but the violations have intensified, reaching unprecedented levels of violence. In the post-election context, we have documented 25 confirmed deaths, most of them young people under 30 years old, from popular neighborhoods. There are two children among them. One of the victims is a member of the Bolivarian National Guard. Of these 25 victims, we have confirmed that 24 died from gunshot wounds. The other was beaten to death. The government claims that there are two more victims, one of whom, another member of the Bolivarian National Guard, apparently died in a traffic accident, but the government has not shared any details, despite our formal written request for information. Although we have initiated our investigations into these cases, we do not yet have sufficient evidence to attribute responsibility for the deaths. However, we can confirm the presence of security forces, such as the Bolivarian National Guard and the Bolivarian National Police, sometimes accompanied by groups of armed civilians who fired on demonstrators during the protests. Between 29th of July and 6th of August, Venezuelan authorities admitted to having arrested more than 2,200 people. Of these, we have confirmed the arrest of at least 158 children, mm -hmm. some with disabilities, and accused of serious crimes such as terrorism and incitement to hatred. This phenomenon is something new and extremely worrying. We are facing a systematic, coordinated, and deliberate repression by the Venezuelan government, which responds to a conscious plan to silence any form of dissent. As part of this plan, the government has instrumentalized the entire state apparatus, including especially the justice system, with a view to silencing any type of difference of opinion that opposes its scheme and to staying in power at any price. During the period between December 2023 and March 2024, we have investigated 39 arrests that we consider, according to our standard of proof, to have been arbitrary. The government invoked conspiracy to carry out this and other arrests, affecting more than 34 people, excuse me, 48 people, including civilians and military personnel. In addition, in the three weeks of the electoral campaign between 4th and 25 of July, we documented the arrest of 121 people, most of whom were arrested simply for having participated or collaborated in opposition campaign events. The increase in repression after the elections was even more brutal. As Marta already indicated, in the week after the elections, the number of people arrested exceeded 2,200 people, according to figures provided by the government itself. 
we have been able to verify that at least 143 of these arrests involved members of seven opposition parties, including 66 leaders of political movements. Politically, politically motivated persecution is evident. These figures represent a level of repression that we have not seen since 2019. Of the people detained in this period, many were subjected to torture and other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment, as well as sexual violence which was perpetrated against women and girls, but also against men. We reported electric shocks, beating with blunt objects, suffocation with plastic bags, immersion in cold water, and forced sleep deprivation, among others. And we also, rep and we also reported touching of breasts, Botox and genitals, forced nudity, and invasive searches. We further documented preliminary elements of what could be more than 25 short-term enforced disappearances since the announcement of the election result. Previously, since December 2023, after a process of strict investigation and analysis, we concluded that at least 15 short-term forces disappearances took place. The anguish and fears of families in this situation is indescribable. We are also concerned about the increasingly intense closure of civic space. Freedom of expression was severely limited by attacks and judicial persecution against journalists, social media influencers, or anonymous people who simply share critical opinions toward the government on their social networks. We documented the arrest of at least 16 journalists and social communicators. Legislative initiatives in this period, through a national assembly which is also subordinated to the government, restricted civic space more. In our report, we mention in particular the so-called NGOs law, which places arbitrary limitations on the autonomous functioning of civil society organizations especially human rights defenders. This law was passed on, uh, this law, excuse me, was passed on 15 August in the midst of the post-election protests. We moreover mentioned the fascist law which criminalized any political option different from that the government from that of the government and propose severe penal and administrative sanction for individuals, media outlets, non-governmental organization, and political parties. We are deeply concerned about the safety of all human rights defenders and that of their families. Their voices, are essential to ensure that violation continue to be documented and that victims are not forgotten. These figures represent only a small sample of the reality faced by thousands of people in Venezuela today. The figures we have presented reveal the extent of violations committed. We cannot ignore that these violations represent a clear and deliberate line of conduct by the authorities of politically motivated persecution. We have come to the conclusion that many of these violations constitute crimes against humanity. In previous reports, we had already documented how the government of Venezuela used systematic repression to remain in power. Today, in this report, we confirm that this repression has reached an unprecedented level. President Maduro himself announced on 
6th of August, exact, exactly 2,229 arrests since 29 July. This was the result of the so-called Operación Tuntun, which was announced in a mix of a mocking and threatening tone. Following this presidential order, without any attachment to legality or respect for the rule of law, we documented more than 40 cases in which the security forces entered private homes without warrants, just using, using social media videos as the only evidence to arrest people who they thought had participated in protests or who had expressed criticism in social media. In several cases, the houses in popular neighborhoods of people who participated in protest or expressed criticism were even marked with an X. As Patricia mentioned, before we have documented that in several cases, the detained people were subject to acts of torture and ill treatment, as well as sexual violence. President Maduro even suggested that all people should be sent to labor camps to be re-educated. According to our investigations, all these arrests involved and were followed by serious violations of due process, reaching unprecedented levels in the country. The criminal proceedings initiated against detainees systematically failed to comply with the minimum guarantees of due process. The Attorney General announced before the people were arrested that they would be charged with crimes as serious as terrorism and incitement to hatred, even against children with disabilities, as Marta mentioned. We have ratified our previous conclusion that the justice system, especially the criminal system, led by the Supreme Court, its criminal appeal chamber and its four terrorism courts is manifestly subordinated to the interests of the executive power and has become a key instrument in the state's plan to repress all kind of political and social dissent. These courts are monopolizing the proceedings against detainees after the elections, who are not allowed to have lawyers of their choice and tried in collective judicial proceedings without individualizing charges against them, which take place at night in detention centers, without effective public defenders, without publicity, and without being able to participate in the proceedings. Victims and a large part of general population are exposed to an arbitrary exercise of power, where arbitrary detention is systematically used together with serious violations of due process. We have previously warned that the government could activate the repressive apparatus at will, and indeed, that is what we are observing. Repression and human rights violations are widespread and systematic, and we must act urgently to protect victims and ensure that those responsible are held into account.